Hello, I'm Derek Woods, and welcome to another edition of Bronx Magazine, where we spotlight the people, places, and the events that make the beautiful Bronx the truly unique place that it is. We're here on the outskirts of the Bronx, right on the border of the Bronx and Yonkers, actually right here in Van Cortlandt Park, right next to Indian Field. We're bordered by the Deegan Expressway and 233rd Street. You know, it's just another one of those beautiful spots that you can really enjoy this time of year, now that spring has sprung. We're right across the street from the very famous Woodlawn Cemetery. Now this part of the park actually has its own claim to fame. This and the entire area factored in to the crime of the century. The kidnapping of Charles Lindbergh's baby in 1932 shocked the nation. The dashing aviator, the first man to fly solo across the Atlantic, was a national hero. The abduction of he and wife Anne's 20-month-old child from their mansion in Hopewell, New Jersey, horrified the country. Even more so when Charles Lindbergh Jr. was found dead in a nearby woods two months later. The kidnapping was dubbed the crime of the century, and the subsequent trial of Bruno Richard Hauptmann, the man eventually convicted and put to death for the crime, still intrigues and provokes debate 75 years later. People keep coming back to the Lindbergh case because the fact that, number one, Lindbergh was the great American hero. If it had been anybody else of a lesser means or profile, it probably would have gotten lost in the shuffle years ago. And the fact that his uh, son's alleged kidnapper, convicted kidnapper, uh, has been the subject of a lot of controversy from the day that they arrested him. And there are many people today who still argue the pros and cons of whether he was innocent or guilty or whether he was framed. And uh, people love controversy. He could easily take it off get it to the light to read? I don't know. Richard Sloan is a former Bronxite that was hooked on the Lindbergh kidnapping as soon as he realized how close the Bronx was linked to the case. I became interested in the Lindbergh case while living in Co-op City and I picked up a book about the case called Kidnap by George Waller and while I was sitting in my living room reading about it I discovered that many of the sites in the Bronx had an important role in the case and that stirred my interest. I went out and I looked at these sites and I got a few friends together who were interested in it and I said, you know, I can show you all of these places because I used to live in the Bronx, this is a few years later, and I know the ins and outs and I took people on a tour and it clicked. Each year, Sloan does a day-long bus tour throughout the Bronx, which includes stops at the Bronx County Courthouse, where Hauptman was first arraigned, the house of Dr. John Condon, a retired Bronx teacher that was picked by the kidnapper to deliver the ransom. In and around Norwood and Woodlawn Cemetery where the kidnapper, dubbed Cemetery John, made contact. St. Raymond Cemetery where the final cash drop was made and the home of German immigrant Bruno Richard Hauptmann, where half the ransom money was found and floorboards from his attic linked him to the scene of the crime. Many sites remain surprisingly similar to their appearance in the 1930s newsreels. The state of New Jersey has rested its case, convinced that it has clearly shown that the defendant Bruno Richard Hoffman came to the state of New Jersey on the night of March the 1st, 1932, brought the ladder which he built to the Lindbergh estate, climbed into the Lindbergh nursery, took the Lindbergh child and murdered it. The nation may have been in the midst of the Great Depression, but the Lindbergh kidnapping was the top story and perhaps the first multimedia frenzy by the press, which seems so familiar today. Well, it was the crime of the century followed by the trial of the century, and it's hard a little bit to understand now just how famous the Lindberghs were in their time before the internet, before television, in the very earliest days of radio, in the early days really of journalism in this country, these may have been the most famous people on the entire planet. Everybody knew who the Lindberghs were. And at the time of the Great Depression, uh, with tremendous poverty, uh, no clear uh, sight out of it, problems in Europe, what the Lindberghs did, uh, the solo flight across the Atlantic, inspired everyone and lifted everyone. And so, when tragedy befell that family, they couldn't get enough. And the press fed that desire for information every day. 
even every hour in the early days of radio on the case, even when there was no news, they manufactured news. And it's a story that still solicits a very mixed response over the guilt or innocence of Hauptmann. Steamship Santa Ines, arriving in New York from Panama, brings Dr. Jossie Condon back from his two-month vacation in Central America. And with his arrival, interest in the fate of Bruno Richard Hauptmann rises again to fever heat. Whether Jossie knows more about the case than has been told is still a mystery. A mystery Governor Hoffman of New Jersey would like to clear up. There have been angry words over the matter, but come up to the Bronx and see me sometime is Jassy's message for the governor. Hoffman went to his death proclaiming his innocence, and his name still provokes debate over capital punishment. Even on the Sloan tour, the group was split down the middle. And I think that the way the case unfolded left so much doubt in people's minds that people to this day wonder, you know, I mean, you can, you can see on the, just on this tour, about half the tour thinks that Hauptmann was, was guilty and the other half thinks he was framed. And also the fact that uh, the accused kidnapper lived very close to where I live and a uh, and little bit I know about it, I always felt that this person was innocent. And also um, feeling that he was framed uh, from various information that I uh, received from people I spoke to and the various things I've read, I was curious to meet other people to have their opinions and to learn more about the uh, kidnapping. There's a great expression that says, not everybody can be a lawyer, not everybody can be a doctor, but everybody's a detective, okay? The second thing uh, is that there's an overwhelming amount of evidence that indicates that Bruno Halvin, in fact, committed this crime. And I think that people like to ignore that I think 2020 hindsight is easy in picking these cases apart. It's just one of a phenomenon that, that catches on and, and it doesn't die, you know? You know, and some of these people, especially the people that find Bruno Hopman innocent, you, if, you, if you stretch the conversation a little further, before you know it, they're saying Oswald didn't shoot Kennedy. So I think that the controversy will go on and on forever. If you'd like to learn more about the Lindbergh tour, you can go to www.lindberghkidnappinghoax.com.